Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look for ways we can work together to advance the cause of Jesus Christ. Today, I have with us Dr. Ron Hunter. He is the uh, CEO of Randall House Publications, D6 Ministries. He's written a book about you, about me, Generational Legacy. It's a journal that we want parents to take and use with their children. So, Ron, first off, thank you for coming to be with us today. It's good to be back. It really is. Great, great items that you're bringing on to this. And man, if you're a new listener for the first time, I want to encourage you to go back in the archives and dive into some of the topics because you're, you're really bringing out some of the best. So hey. thank you for what you're doing. Well, thank you, Ron. And you've been on here a lot. Many of your uh, folks there from yes. D6 have been here. And yes. hey, this is a great resource. We're excited about this particular journal that you put out. What led you to to put this together? Yeah, this this is not your average book you no, see published, is it? Uh, it's not. In, in, in various ways. Um, this book is kind of a little bit of a um, an outpouring, if you would, of, of multiple things. Number one, uh, there are introverts in this world and there are extroverts. I am not a natural storyteller. Like if you're just sitting around in the living room, I'm not just going to pop up story after story. And I'm very jealous of the people who are. And so it helps me to have prompts to go, hey, what about so-and-so? And I know that 50% of all parents, based on the Myers-Briggs research, they're also introverts Mm -hmm. and they need a little help. And the extroverts who have no trouble telling stories don't always know how to refine them into a spiritual takeaway. Mm -hmm. And so this book was put together in a way that would allow conversation beyond one's life. You know, we're big on the Deuteronomy 6 passage, from the time a child gets up in the morning till they go by, you know, go off to school, to wherever we're going, till we sit down at the dinner table, we're tucking them in bed, have natural conversations. Don't preach to your kids all day, Mm -hmm. but connect to their heart. And as we bump into teachable moments, look for ways to make that difference. Does that make sense? Oh, it does. It does. And so you have stressed Deuteronomy 6 for For years. For years. For years. And and we just want to continue to provide resources and tools. Yes. Now, Dr. Moody, you've traveled and you've spoken extensively, not only in the United States, but around the world. You're probably like many of us who, Mm -hmm. whatever your message is, at the end of it, you always have somebody come up and say, man, I wish I'd have heard that message 20 years ago. Or, and, And we get this all the time. I have people coming up with tears going, man, your D6 message, if I'd have only known that when my kids were three and four, now they're grown. They might be going through prodigal years. They Mm -hmm. might be away from church. And so I've heard that so many times that the goal of this journal was to give parents another chance to speak into their kids' lives, whether they're a prodigal or following Christ. Now they get to open up the pages. And again, when you see this this journal, it's, again, not your typical book. It's got a solid hardback on it. It's spiral-bound, color pages inside. And there's a very intentional set of questions here. It goes from very lighthearted questions and moves into a little bit more serious. And then the last third of the book is intentionally more biblically centric, Mm -hmm. where we're speaking prayers and Bible verses and Bible characters into the student and and our you know our our kiddos' lives. And Mm -hmm. I would say that if there's somebody out there, while this is intended for your children or grandchildren. If you are really close and you have an adopted Timothy, you know, or an Esther in one's life, yes. and you're super close as a mentor, don't feel, you know, you know, right. You could do this. Yeah, too. you could do this there as well. Yeah, but that's that's the intent of this. This is the heart's cry. Yes, and I often tell parents who get it. Start filling it out Mm -hmm. and do not feel pressured to like, oh, I got to sit down and do this in a month. This is not one of those books you can do. In fact, if your kids are younger, below the age of five or 10, I would spend the next 10, 15 years just Mm -hmm. jotting away. I would put it, you know, on on my desk, on my bedside table, and once a week pick it up, thumb through the pages. Don't take it in order, thumb through the pages. If a question hits you, Pull out your pen, jot some notes mm-hmm. in there, close it back up, pull it out three or four or five days, a week later. That's great. Spend a lifetime filling it out. And then it, when your kids reach age, say, 25, consider giving it to them as a gift or 30. You know your kids as to when the best time to give it to them is. Yes. But most parents are going to hold this 
and let their kids find it when they pass away. Mm -hmm. And now this gives them a chance to speak beyond the grave Mm -hmm. in a way that says, hey, mom and dad prayed for you. We, we've always had your best interest. And kids love whenever they pick this up. This book is designed, the reason why the title is About You, About Me, mm-hmm. is all the left side of the pages is about the parent or the grandparent. So when I look at this, and I'm, I'm just going to give our, 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 our viewers, listeners a, a sample here. On this side of the page, the left side of the page, it says About Me. And it asks, what are my top five books? What are my top, top five TV shows? My top five movies. I fill this in. And then on the right-hand side, it says, what are your kids' top five books, TV shows? Now, you're sitting there going, oh, what, at age five or age 15 or as an adult? Yeah. I think you've got the ability to make the adjustments in here. Yeah. Put a date on it when you wrote it in. Hey, when you're five, these are your favorite books. But when you're a teenager, these are your favorite books. Yeah. And you keep making those changes in there. And you're talking about finding this after someone's passed away. That's got some nostalgia to it. You go and maybe investigate some of those books, some of those movies. The kids, it really... Put something into their lives, and then it? every time they think about those movies or those books mm-hmm. or that candy bar or that T-shirt, now they're going. Oh, I remember mom from that. I remember yes. dad from that. I remember grandpa from that. And so it goes from that light to you know. Here's here's a fun fun page I marked here. I would describe my relationship with my grandparents this way. I hope my relationship with my grandchildren will be. Now I understand, and we all do. Not everybody's relationship with their parents or grandparents was healthy, spiritual, or positive. Be honest when you fill out the pages. Because there's also room to say, I want to make a difference in this next generation in you. I want my relationship to be good. Even if a parent has found the Lord late in life, say 30, 40, they can in this book say, I didn't do some things well in the beginning, but here's what I want you to remember. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want you to take away. And then, you know, on the right side of the page, it says your favorite activities with your grandparents were. That's going to bring back some memories because parents' memories are not always the same as the children's. But when you write about them, you're prompting their memory to go back. And then that will just spill over into more and more memories. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Firm that up. Firm that up. Yeah, so they've got Paul Paul was constantly writing his pencil. I have fond memories of. This is a chance to capture these memories and pull it in there. Um, once we get across the uh, middle portion of the book, then it gets into what I call the fun reflective questions. Um, little serious, but also fun in there. Here's a question on the left-hand side about me. Let me tell you about one of the people who mentored me or had a positive influence in my life. Well, I intend, and I, I, you know, I, I was looking through and prepping for this podcast. I've not filled out this page, and you know, our our listeners can see I've got two books here. My yes. wife and I have two kids, so we bought four. Uh-huh. I'm doing one for my daughter. I'm doing one for my son. My wife Pam is doing one for our daughter and one for our son. Now we've added one more book because we've got a granddaughter, so we've got six among us, with one more on the way. So in this one, I plan to write about Frank Watson, the person who mentored or had a positive influence in my life. He was my boss at the TV station I worked at when I was bivocational as a pastor. He taught about ethics and business. He taught about relationships. He would work through an analysis of the relationship we had with our clients. We spent an hour together every Friday morning from 9 till 10, and it was some of the most treasured time in my life. And I think that a lot of what I do today was because of Frank Watson. Mm -hmm. And then on the right-hand side, it has this question. When you choose people to learn from, mentor you, or have an influence in your life, select someone who... And you get to fill in the blank as the person writing this has ethics or cares about you, doesn't want to be narcissistic enough to say, I want to make you into me. Yeah. That's not what mentors is about. And we can, you know, you can just guide them mm-hmm. in whatever you want to say oh, to them. That's great. That's so great. that's kind so, of the way the question's set up all the way through. So they know a lot about you. That's and right. And you're able to then come back and think, well, what would be important for me that's right. when I'm looking for someone? How many times have you and, and I, I remember having conversations with my grandfather that I wished I'd have made notes on. Right, right, because it, it, you lose it if you don't you have do, it written You do, because down. I'm like, I can't remember everything. And right. my grandfather was rich in wisdom, and I didn't record all of them. I have one set of notes where I did an intentional interview with him that I thought was so valuable. I went back about family history, and, well, this is one place you can put it together yeah. and keep it in, in a safe place for your kids to discover. Mm-hmm. I heard about Daryl Strawberry mm-hmm. uh, recently, who... 
uh, he's come to know the Lord very late in his life. As a baseball star, he kind of led not so good life. Yeah. And he admits that in his testimony and as he's sharing. He said that after his mother passed away, between the mattresses, he found a prayer journal. And he said when he opened it up, he started crying because his mother was praying prayers, not that he'd be a better ball player, but that he would be a better man mm. and find Jesus Christ. And it was very instrumental in changing his life. So this is really critical. It and is. When it's written down, that's what is remembered. That's what's that's passed right. down to the next generations. That's right. This is kind of that etching it in stone. Yeah. That's the impress upon your kids. You know, and, and then you can finish out with some of the fun, more serious questions at the end of the book. Here's some prayers that I've been praying over your life. Yes. When I think about favorite Bible characters that I like, here's why I like them. Here's a Bible character in the Bible that reminds me of you. You can see how yeah. this just becomes super, super helpful. So I'm a parent uh, and I'm listening in. I can see good ways that I could use this right. book. I'm a pastor. Right. What are some ways I got my, could use this to help my congregation along? Absolutely. I think one of the ways is just share maybe some of the journal entries you've made and say, hey, here's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to be p perfectly transparent here. Nobody needs this book. They can get a blank journal mm. and do some of the same items. However, I think they'll miss out on the structure if you're not intentional enough to go, hey, here's those fun paper or plastic questions all the way into here are some of the spiritual ways to develop your kids. Yeah. The point is, be intentional about it, even if you grab that blank journal. But as a pastor, you know, one of the items you can do is just make these kinds of resources available and say, hey, you should journal. Mm -hmm. You should preach on Deuteronomy chapter 6. You should preach on Psalm 78 that says, tell them about what God has done so that the generations ahead will know, even the generations not yet born. Yeah, and you know, to get your children, that's, your that's grandchildren right. to be thinking about these things. That's correct. This is something you can do as a pastor to guide them along. I think this very well could become one of your children or grandchildren's favorite heirloom mm -hmm. above all else to be able to go back and read. You know, you combine this written word with the photo albums yes. that they're leaving behind, and they'll be treasured. Yes, so let's not forget that. That's right. And you can tuck in photos. You can tuck in notes. There's nothing that says you only need what's... Make this a scrapbook as yeah, such. turn it into yours. Yeah, that's right. Well, we really appreciate you putting it together, and thank you for taking yeah, the time absolutely. to come by and share with us. And, hey, we want to encourage our listeners. They could go to d6.com. They That's could right, learn more. That's right, d6family.com. d6family.com. Yeah, find all of the resources, many of which are free. Yes. You know, we've got the – by the way, one of the fun ways that we constantly encourage people with the Q&A is download our family app. And it's got 450 free questions on it that just constantly keeps that dialogue going while you're in the car, mm -hmm. maybe while you're in line at the grocery store or wherever. We used it at a restaurant. Hey, we're sitting around the table. Here it is. Open up, hand it to your kids, and let them ask the questions, not you. Yes. They feel, hey, I'm part of it, and they get excited about it. Redeem that time. Yeah, that's Use right. Use that time well. That's right. So thank you for letting us share these, these well, resources. You're welcome. We're glad to do it. And hey, thank you all, you listeners, for yes. listening in. Please take this podcast, share it with others, uh, give us a little review on Facebook. Remember, every little thing we do helps, and remember, we truly are better when we serve the Lord together. Thank you for being with us today.